So uh, good evening, everyone. I think I know everybody on the call this evening, all 13 of us, but again, my name is Rick Geisted. I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Calgary Fish Creek. I also sit on the District Learning and Development Committee responsible for hosting these monthly club learning webinars, which we are now into our fourth year of doing. And as usual, I'll be your Zoom host uh, for this evening's webinar. In the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to personally acknowledge that most of us who are on this call tonight live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, those being Siksika, Kainai, Bikani, the Tusitina, and Stony Nakoda Nations, and the Metis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. I'd like to welcome and thank everyone for attending tonight's webinar on reining in the June membership stampede. And I must admit when I heard that, I wasn't sure what to expect, but uh, uh, Jeff helped me on that. Our presenters for this evening are Jeff Foss from the Oak Oaks Club and Dan Doherty from Calgary West. As usual, um, uh, this, this uh, webinar is scheduled for one hour and it is being recorded. Uh, live transcription has been activated, so if you want to activate it on your own device, look for and push the live transcript mm -hmm. button and normally says CC. Please turn off your audio so that we can minimize noise distractions, but should you wish to stay uh, live with your video, it, it's up to you. Please use the chat button to communicate with each other and to record any questions you may have. Uh, Jeff and Dan have broken their presentation into a few parts and uh, after they finish each section, they will reach out to see if you have any questions. But so you don't forget what you might wanna ask, uh, please record them in the chat and then we have a record of it. So some bios on Jeff and Dan that I received. Jeff Foss has been a proud Rotarian, <clears throat> excuse me, since 2006, beginning with the Rotary Club of Red Deer, in 2012, he transferred to the Rotary Club of Okotoks, where he served as club president in 2014-15 and again in 21-22. Jeff is currently his club's membership chair, go figure, has also served as the club's director of international service, director of club service, and Rotary Foundation chair. Jeff is a multiple plus eight Paul Harris fellow. Congratulations, Jeff. Jeff is serving in his first year as our district membership chair for District 5360. And from my viewpoint, I think he's doing an excellent job. Dan Doherty is past president of Calgary West Rotary, where he has been an active member. I have to say this slowly for over 40 years. That's absolutely amazing. He is the past chair of Hull Child and Family Services Accessible Housing and the Calgary Rotary Clubs Foundation. Dan has been on 16 Mexico Homes of Hope building trips and having returned from a polio NID in Ethiopia and mission work in Uganda and Malawi, Dan is reinvigorated in the Rotary polio eradication fight. Dan was the District 5360 governor in 1819 and is currently a Zone 28 Assistant Rotary Coordinator. Dan regularly presents and facilitates presentations across Zone 28 on membership and diversity issues. Dan was awarded the Distinguished Service Above Self Award, the highest tribute awarded in the Rotary world. Dan was also uh, honored recently with the Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee Medal for community service. Dan and Marlene will have been married 45 years this coming August and have four incredible kids, and he says, even better, three grandchildren. They have a dog, Molly, and who I've also met, who loves to be everyone's friend. Welcome, Jeff and Dan, and take it away, please. Thanks, Rick, appreciate that. What a great opening. Uh, Mr. Doherty, I always learn something new about you, so that was good to hear. Uh, I'm not worthy to be in your presence, but we'll try. Oh, I don't. Uh, <laughs> 
So uh, the uh, the title reigning in the June membership stampede. Well, I figured with stampede coming, you know, everybody would kind of trigger on that word. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the membership stampede, we're talking about people that are kind of lined up in the blocks, ready to hit the doors and find other things to do other than rotary. So we want to kind of uh, rein that in. That's what that title is all about. Um, just click on here. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about the data. Uh, so when we look at our membership numbers in our district, um, historically, we can see that in 2016, we had just under 1,900 members. And as of uh, the start of uh, this Rotary year, we had uh, between 14 and 1,500 members. So we're uh, the only kind of blip in that whole thing was the 2018-19 year, which I think somebody on this call was district governor then. Uh, but, uh, but otherwise we see uh, a pretty steady 4% decline in membership year over year. So, and net negative membership growth. And so I think uh, we've all seen that in our clubs um, and uh, people come, people go, but uh, by and large, we haven't been uh, able to recruit uh, more people uh, into our clubs than are leaving in total. So I think what we really want to do here is highlight, we all have heard about the numbers, right? We've heard about the, the trends, but what we want to do tonight and with Jeff, Jeff and I, we want to be able to explain the numbers and really what happens and how it happens. So it's, it's not about uh, feeling bad, feeling nervous, feeling whatever. It's about having a bit of a reality check with ourselves and just having a look, look in the mirror and see what happens. So, Right. Thanks for that. And so when we look at what have we done this year so far in Rotary in our district, uh, we went from 1489 at the start of the Rotary year. Um, the comparison was to the start of the previous Rotary year, uh, 1565. Um, so uh, in that last Rotary year, we, we lost a few people. So far this year uh, to the end of April, we're up uh, net 115 new members. And that's great. I mean, that's the direction we want to go. We want to grow Rotary. And when we talk to the clubs, and I've done a lot of talking to a lot of clubs, um, what was the single biggest factor in um, that net positive number? It's that they set a goal and then they work toward achieving it. And, um, and the numbers speak for themselves, really. So we don't want to get drunk on the fumes. So we're going to, now we're going to show you what really happens coming up. Right. So there's this uh, model that we use uh, that uh, uh, zone sends to us. Um, it's called success track and it's a predictive model and it looks at your historic averages and um, the yellow line on this chart uh, talks about our district's historic averages. So if you look on the scale on the left, it zeroes out at uh, July one of the year and it looks at whether we are uh, net positive or net negative um, on that scale. So you can see that historically we, we sort of flatline out of the gate. We take a dip at Christmas time and then we climb out of the trenches a little bit and to uh, June and then between uh, the start and end of June we historically drop uh, a number of uh, members. And we can say that Rotary is seasonal um, because this is a seasonality that nearly every Rotary club in the world experiences. Um, it's been given a nickname um, called the June swoon, uh, where people get their invoice for July 1 and they make a renewal decision at that point. And that's where we see the drop. Um, and so the green line is uh, the line that uh, would suggest that we are going to be at least net slightly positive. Um, and that was a, a predictive uh, uh, number for us. And then the blue line is our actual. And it's quite interesting to see how our actuals are tracking fairly closely to the predicted green line if we do everything right. And, um, and what we're here to talk to you about today is that predicted drop uh, between the 1st of June and the 1st of July. And is there a way we can mitigate that 
and um, and not lose all those great people that we've spent all year uh, looking to recruit only to see it vaporize between June 1 and the end of uh, June. Any top ups there, Dan? No, I think, you know, you can see that December down to January, again, it's, it's an invoicing thing because a lot of clubs know that uh, we're invoiced twice a year by RI, July 1st and, and uh, January 1st. So a lot of clubs will, again, get those members that have not paid their dues or not really a part of the club uh, off the roster so they don't have to pay. But uh, you can see that that June through ju to that July 1st, that, that's just a critical, critical time in Rotary. And it, and it is worldwide. So, mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so this is what I was saying earlier, that this June swoon phenomena is, uh, is a decision on renewal. So it's a, it's a value decision that members are making. Um, it, it, do I get the value that I'm looking for in Rotary? Um, and is it worth paying for another six months or another year if they're billed annually? Um, and you can see that, you know, statistically, that's where we take a, a nosedive. And, and I submit that we don't have to take a nosedive if we do some important things here between now and the end of the year. We typically lose over 80 members in our district in June. Yeah. Between 80 and 100 in June. Right, which would basically erase the 115 that we worked so hard to gain up to this point. Okay. All right. Any questions at that point on the data? This data is available as well for every club. Uh, we can break it down for you. Uh, you know the attrition rate that you normally have, and and the attraction rate that you're you're achieving within your club. And it, and it's you know a lot of us have the same symptoms, but we have different issues within our clubs. So, right. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, so really the bottom line is that we, we need we need to earn the right to have Rotarians renew their membership. You know, it, it's we can't we can't just assume that because they've been at lunch any other day, uh, every other day that they're going to be renewing at the end of the end of each year, right? And it really what does it come down to? It, it comes down to what what is their their perception that, that your members have? What's the value of their membership to them, and really the impact in, in Rotary and in, in, or impact Rotary has and the contribution it has on the community, and the sense of belonging and camaraderie. I've done, so those that know me on the screen know that I love my surveys and I love doing that and I love working with numbers and really looking in the mirror and seeing what happens. And you know, no surprise, people people join Rotary. Um, um, to for two two primary reasons really number one is to do something in the community and the second is for good fellowship right and and the on the flip side of that why are people leaving rotary and you can phrase it however you want but number one is a lot of the people who have come in and joined rotary and then have left quickly uh is that they they feel that we were we're not having an impact in, in, in the community anymore. We're just check writers. We, we're good at raising money and we write checks. So are we really having an impact? Are we really, do we really feel engaged in the community, right? So it's so critical that every club has that, that personal engagement or engagement to me is that you're doing something in the community. And the second primary reason that people leave is that, uh, uh, they feel disrespected. They feel like they're not part of it. And it's, it's actually poor fellowship, incredibly poor fellowship and the way we treat each other uh, within our clubs. And we need to be aware of that because words matter, actions matter and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I see a question in here, uh, the uh, information on demographics of the loss. Yeah, we, we've, within the clubs, we've got some of that information. Uh, I'm hoping clubs are tracking that themselves. 
But what we're finding is that uh, one of the main statistics is that we're having a hard time maintaining membership uh, within the first five years. If we get people to go over five years, they're lifers primarily. Uh, but if, if, if we don't engage them and we don't have let them feel welcome and warm within our clubs, we lose them. We lose them a lot. Slide. So this is the, this is the okay. Oh, yeah. Doug, you've got a question. You can see. Unmute yourself. Yeah, it it's a, it's more of a comment than a question. I think what I'm hearing you say that I and I agree with that uh, it's not what's happening. What happens in June? that is the driving factor that happens to be the way people do things we stop our newspaper uh, uh memberships then when they become due and that so it's well before that but i i think that we'll hear a little bit more about what we could do and you know i i feel although i'm a a transfer member and a newer member here. I'm certainly one of the older members. And I've I've been in, in these kinds of things before. And I guess what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the younger members that are around then and for their input on there. And so I'm hoping that we're, that we're going to hear more from the younger members what did work for them. And that as we as we go along, we're we're gonna we're gonna touch on that for sure. And I think I think what's critical is that you, you know your point that this is this is a year round. I the line I use a lot, and Jeff laughs at me, but I membership is a contact sport. It's not it's not something that's passive. It's not something that's done by one member or one uh, committee within the club. It's got to be every single member being aware of what's happening and. I know our club uh, did uh, two years ago, just before Marlene became president of Calgary West, we did a survey of our membership and how they were feeling and, and that sort of thing. And there's one member who's not now no longer a member. And his comment back, and it really hurt, it hurt a lot of us, is that he said, I've been a member of the club for five years and I walk into the room and I feel invisible. Hmm. And and that's that's a really tough thing to hear, isn't it? I mean, especially when it's your club and you know, you thought you were maybe doing your job, but we weren't listening. And that's what they, that's what we're talking about now. We got you got every club needs to know their numbers, right? And I think Jeff has provided the the, the worksheets for every club uh, that shows your average attrition rate uh, and your average attraction rate. And uh, you know, an average attrition rate across around the world is you know ten to thirteen percent. It's kind of the, the the numbers that are for a healthy club, and then obviously the attraction rates are greater than ten to thirteen percent. And you look at a lot of clubs that are, I'll, I'll use clubs that are flatlined; that are, they haven't changed their membership, but their attrition rate is nineteen percent, and their attraction rate is eighteen or nineteen percent, right? So we're all we're doing is churning, and that's the thing that every club has has unique characteristics that need to be looked at. And, and, you know, doing a health check of your club is so critical. And, and it's one of the most difficult things to do as, as Rotary leaders is to be able to put the, do the questions and there's all kinds of forms that we can provide you. And the RI's got a whole bunch listed, you know, uh, resources on, on, the, on uh, my, my Rotary. But, but the reality is, you got to ask the questions and be ready to listen to the answers, right? It's, uh, and this isn't, you know, we, we can't assume that everybody, oh, we don't have to, I don't have to talk to Rick Eisted. He, he's, he's healthy. He'll, he'll be okay. Well, maybe Rick isn't healthy. Or that bird guy, I mean, he's getting old and all that. And, and is he really got the energy that he used to have? Whatever. But don't assume, right? We, we got to ask the questions. And, Quite frankly, the tough part of this is it, it, it's not an email strategy. You can't email your 
you know, hey, Gary, how are you feeling today? How, you know, how, how's it going in Rotary today? No, I mean, you need, you need to be willing to, to sit and listen, you know, try to do it in person, do it on the phone, good old fashioned. Even tonight, before I got on here, I talked to three of our members of our club just to see how they're doing. And, you know, I, I got some really great answers. They're all, all, all of them are renewing, but they each had concerns that if we go on, on, if we don't listen to those over the next year, maybe they won't be here, right? That personal phone call, coffee meeting. How, how often has somebody asked you for a coffee, just said, hey, how's it going? How are you feeling? How does that, you know, how does it, how does that, that whole fellowship thing, how does that, how do you build that if you're going to try to do it through a plastic screen or an email, right? Um, and, and there's a question, is there, is there something we're not doing for you? You know, I, you know, I've traveled, you know, all through our district, obviously as DG, but my new role as a zone coordinator, I've been in, in, involved in, in meetings and clubs right across Canada and into the United States, talking to clubs and, and doing whatever. And too often I hear we need new, we need more members because we can't run this project without them, or we need to sell more tickets, or we need to, you know, you're going to come in, you know, Keith, and you're, I, you got to sell more tickets for, for the music festival in Medicine Hat. I know your club doesn't do the music festival, but uh, it's, I think you've got some satellite members that used to. Right. So, but, but the reality is you, you, the question should be, Hey, you know, Keith, what's important to you? What, what's your passion? How can we support you a little bit better? Right. And the, and the key for here is, you know, it's, it's an active listening thing. It's, it's, it's being in what we call a brave space where you're willing to listen to what's happening, listen to what people are saying, and it may make you uncomfortable. Because I know a lot of the surveys we've done and look at the, our own district and our own club, my goodness, it's not the rotary that I'm living, but it is the rotary other people are living. And we need, we need to be able to, we need to allow ourselves to be uncomfortable so that we can listen intently, right? And here's another one. I mean, conduct exit interviews. If I've asked everybody on the screen, hey, hey, Doug, when's the last in exit interview you guys did? Well, they did it on the last member, whatever it is. Okay, tell me the results. Uh, well, you know, we can't share that. We had that in our own club. The membership guy didn't want to share the exit interview with the board. What? If we don't know what's going on, we can't do it, right? And, and again, it's asking the uncomfortable questions so that we really learn, right? And try to understand if there's other people feel in the same way. Can I add one thing there, Dan? Yeah. Um, just as I'm talking to clubs, um, I get a sense that in many clubs, uh, there, there are different things called sacred cows. And you can't touch this thing, whatever it is. It could be part of their their meeting structure or, or, or committee structure or the things that the club um, does or wants to do um, and they're untouchable. And I think if we're seeing clubs with um, significant exits, I think that's really where they need to start looking at their sacred cows. Um, does, does it make a, a sense to, to question those things? Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Sorry, I just had to unmute myself again. Uh, I was going to comment that there is a focus on numbers, but the numbers really mean little or nothing. It's the talents that are associated with those numbers that you really don't want to lose. Talents that may be already be there or talents that you could develop. And uh, the talent isn't selling tickets I, uh, only on there. It, there's a variety of things with leadership and contribution of ideas. But one thing that we could do, and we could, you could start with the meeting tonight, is that you want to indicate, you want to hear the thoughts 
of every single member of, that's attending tonight and for them to contribute their ideas and to someone keep track of it then so you ask them at the end. Yeah. Because often people are a little reticent to put things forward and we knew, really need to encourage that and support that more because that's how we get the good ideas. That's how we get the good projects uh, on there. Yeah, I think, you know, Doug, I, I, you know, the, doing it in a larger groups, uh, very often um, the, the most confident people are heard and the ones that have the best message uh, don't have, seem to get the voice, even though, however you try. I'm going to talk about our own club, and Marlene just reminded me of this, is that a lot of our board were really reluctant to make the calls, the personal calls, the 1v1 calls. Uh, because, you know, they, they seem to be uncomfortable with it. But really, at the end of the day, as we talk more about them and talk with, we had a, a board meeting last night, and, and they really actually enjoyed the process. And they enjoyed that personal connections. And what I think is great, we got our incoming president meeting people he didn't know were even members. So, so I mean, it's those kinds of connections and getting back to that that personal side of it is important. I know, you know, downtown you've got what 120 members uh, in that or whatever that number is now. But but the reality is, you know, you, you've got hopefully you've got a committee, Doug, on your membership side that you can divide it up and get your board involved because it's really, it, it, it's good not only for the member to be heard, but it's also really good for the leadership team to, to lead by serving rather than leading by telling. Does that, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Oops. Oh, lost it. Oh, there. What happened there? There we go. <laughs> You're the technology guy, Joe. <laughs> so, did you want me to do this one? Yeah, or are you, doing this yeah one? You, you, you go on that now, Joe. Okay, sure. We're interchangeable. <clears throat> so, again, just going back to the personal connection and listening and talking to people. I used to work for a fellow by the name of uh, Andrew Nuanis. He was out of uh, Verizon in the States, and um, he had a lot of uh, great leadership, uh, um, uh, I guess, mentorship uh, for us. And uh, one of the things he always said is uh, recognize publicly and coach privately, but never underestimate the power of recognition. Uh, people often say, well, I, I don't really want that. And um, but inside they really do. Uh, we all want the balloons and streamers and the parade um, in different forms, but they really do appreciate um, having been recognized for their their contributions. And to your point, Doug, about you know talk about their talents that they've brought to the project. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed uh, having you on this project with your project management skills or your leadership skills. Uh, these are things that are absolutely necessary to the success of the project. And I apologize for my fading video, but presumably you didn't come to watch my face. Um, sharing success stories. So the stories of how Rotary's activities have positively impacted the community and, and the individual members um, in our clubs. And then members are more likely to renew their membership when they can see uh, a direct line between what they did and what the outcome was. Um, and none of this stuff I'm sure is, is amazing any of you, but it is basic stuff. Uh, create engaging programs and events. Uh, so this is all kind of part of the whole vibrant club um, mantra. Uh, so by uh, having uh, folks engaged in your projects, your programs and your different events, uh, it gives them a purpose uh, for being in the club. I just want to build off those first three points a little bit. And, mm -hmm. you know, there, there's uh, Calvary West did a, uh, a yearbook uh, last year. And in that yearbook, it, there was uh, 80 pages 
of social events that we were on, community events that we were on, international events that we were involved in. And it spoke to a number of things. It spoke to uh, the number of members that we had engaged. It spoke to the amount of money we raised or, or invested. It spoke to the lives impacted, right? And at first, our club was reluctant to share some of the stats and whatever, because, you know, who, we don't do anything during COVID. You know, you can't do it. Like, but, you know, we did 80 pages worth of stuff. And the first thing that people did when they got that, it was like your high school yearbook. People started looking for their picture in there, where they were engaged. Oh, there's my project, or there's where I was, whatever it was. And there are some that, you know, I'm not in here. Oh, well, maybe we missed your project. You know, next year, let's make sure we get it in there, whatever it is, right? So, you know, we, we like to be thanked. You know, although Rotarians say we don't do it for the recognition, we still want to be thanked. We, we want to feel like we're worthy and what our efforts that we're doing in our club are, are worthwhile, right? And, and, you know, we're more successful sometimes than we think we are, especially when you, you started looking at the lives that you've done. And those active uh, uh, engaged members when they're at a social and the fellowship that comes out of doing service together, or do a, a program, you know, it, it's really, really important. So and that leads to Jeff's next point. So just again, highlighting the benefits of their membership in Rotary. Um, we've we've all come here for community service, but there's other things. There's the, I, I think we underestimate, maybe sometimes we create this as the sacred cow in certain clubs that we can't uh, be, seen as being uh, actively networking with one another or we can't talk about our business or our profession um, and um, you know other than in a um, vocational talk and and by the way i in my club i banned the term vocational talk i i call them uh, member talks because i'm interested certainly in their vocation but i'm also interested in them as a human being so tell me all about you as opposed to just your vocation um, what's, fun, what's fun about those talks is that we, a lot of the clubs have a focus on getting all the new members up there and cycling them through. And, you know, it's, it's like a beauty cat contest and, and we get everybody up there, but then everybody says, who the heck's Doug? Who the heck's Keith? Who the heck's Rick? The, the, the new members have no idea who the older members, more mature members are. And it's mm -hmm. important to share allow them to share their stories too. Exactly. Gary, you got a question? Well, it's not, sorry, I've got a terrible voice. It's not so much a question, but I'm actually introducing in July that the older members do their bio, uh, going cycling through the older members so that new members get to know the old members. The old members get a sense of recognition as well uh, because they've been asked to, 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 to have a focus on them as well. Uh, we're also introducing, which they don't know yet because you guys are getting a preview to uh, July, uh, a slideshow. And, uh, we're going to be inviting our um, charities to send us mm -hmm. a three minute, three to five minute uh, slide deck that we can include uh, while we're eating breakfast, while we're doing things, uh, so that people can see the, where our money is going. So I think engagement has got to be the key word here. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah, you know, Myrna, your, your club, you know, Sun, Sunrise, you got a lot of great members in there that have done some incredible things, you know, starting Los Amigos and doing all kinds of amazing kind of projects. It just, and if your newer members could hear a little bit about who they were, you know, and who they are, it, it really goes a long way to building that camaraderie and that fellowship that's, that's in there. So, Yes, that's true. And uh, we try to do that. We, we try to do that. And uh, we try to celebrate, like you say, everybody's successes. Um, I think, you know, Los Migos is just one project. And yeah. we have to be sure that we include the other projects that don't have as much of a profile. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and in fact, what we're thinking of doing is that 
regularly each of the committees will just update for the newer members or their co-members what they're doing on a regular basis uh you know so each committee can just give a good a small report and uh talk about what they're doing and we can all celebrate that regularly yeah we love ringing the bell you know, yep. it's important yep, yep. Rick, do you have a comment yeah, I wanted to mention, uh, we were talking about these vocational talks. So I'm an associate member of the Global Travelers E-Club. It's a club based out of uh, District 5950, which is in um, uh, Minnesota. And uh, we meet on the second and fourth Tuesday. Uh, we're now up to, I believe, 80 members. 40 of which are full members. They've either joined the club or left their club and went to this club. And the associate members, which is a status that Rotary International acknowledges now, uh, allows me to maintain my membership in Calgary Fish Creek, but to go to, um, to take in these meetings. And every meeting in this club chartered in, I think it was March of 21, um every every meeting we have what we call meet the member so the, pre the person tells their story kind of their life story they touch on vocation they touch on family they touch on rotary and the things that are in, in, important to them so i found that that's one way of you know in an hour an hour and a half meeting you can only touch the surface um with getting to know people and you can't meet all the people necessarily in that time frame so this is just one way so one by one i did mine about a year ago i think it was and uh, everybody will have a chance at, at giving that and that's promoted at every meeting and so i find it um find it a, a nice way it does a couple of things um you know we get to know the person the member wherever they are i'm i think i'm the third canadian that's a member of the club but we have we have members from all over the world i think in 30 states it's largely a us one but we have membership in europe and in mexico and south america and canada but it's a way of recognizing people as well and and bringing out um just new ideas it's excellent, excellent, Rick. I mean, I, I think there's there's a lot to say about new members when they come in, younger members are coming in. Fellowship to them might be defined differently than it is to you and I. I mean, we like to go have a pint of Guinness and have, have a good time, uh, but they're looking for mentorship. A lot of the younger members are looking for a mentorship. You know, Hank, I mean, your club, uh, you know, Chinook, you've got, you've got so many members that have done so many things, including yourself on all the foundation work you did and the mentorship that you can provide. And it's fun watching a younger, newer member hearing somebody who's got the experience and the, and the depth of knowledge that, that somebody like a Hank has. And they're saying, hey, I got to talk to that person and get, get something going. And that's what's happened to a couple of our younger members. So it, it's really, uh, really important that we, we really encourage that kind of sharing, so. Yeah, I, you know, just to that point, I remember one of our uh, more senior members getting up in a meeting and talking to his colleagues, his peers, and he said to them, he says, you know, when you guys don't show up, when you don't come to Rotary, we're depriving these younger members of our, uh, our knowledge, our wisdom, uh, our mentorship opportunities that we're providing to them. They're coming here because they, they want that connection with you. And when we don't show up, uh, and that that creates a gap there. And uh, so, uh, you know, it was nice of him to do that. Uh, he's uh, uh, an oil and gas accountant, retired, um, and uh, as well as a uh, a uh, cattle rancher. And uh, one of our newer members is a uh, a men's counselor, and he's also a rancher. So we've got the young guy, the young rancher, tied up with the old rancher and uh to the hitching post and uh so it's 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 really part of that whole networking and also professional development and um and we talk about uh you know raising a pint or two so the social events 
uh, we need to make sure that we've uh, got something going on there uh, at all times, that people have something where they can connect. Because really, these things, if the common theme is connections. Uh, so find ways people can connect, connect through service, connect through social events, connect through professional development, connect through networking. And, um, and if we have to uh, kind of push some of the sacred cows out of the way to make that happen, that's going to be beneficial to the clubs. You know, Diane, even smaller clubs like Millennium, I mean, you've got such, such great depth of this, the membership there and the experiences you've had. To sometimes to revisit those successes and to share them and get everybody pumped up on, on what they've done. And I think it's really, it's really an important message that it's okay to pat ourselves on the back once in a while and say, hey, this is what we did right. And maybe you're working on another project or something that's stalled out a little bit and is pulling in those members that have been silent or on the sidelines for a while uh, to get them engaged and saying, hey, how did you handle this? when you did whatever other project that you did. It, it's, uh, pe people like to be respected and and, and, if, and if we listen to some of the wisdom they've got, I think it really goes a long way. Because uh, one of our issues we have, you know, there's, we got diversity. Well, one of the, the main issues within Rotary's diversity is ageism. And sometimes what the, the more senior members they don't feel respected anymore. They don't feel like they've got a part to play. They don't feel that they've got a role to play in some of the projects where in fact they could, they could be making every project a lot richer and stronger uh, through their experience. So. Okay. Any comments on that, Diane? Ah. She agrees. Okay. We didn't wake Hank. We haven't wake, woken Hank up yet. And Berg, I think, slipped off to sleep too again. So <laughs> this well, is my it. eyes are open. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everything that's been said tonight is you know you're hitting the nail right on the head. Um, knowing your membership is important, and I'm, here I'm speaking from my own uh, personal experiences. And I know sometimes uh, we don't do enough to include the older members and sometimes maybe we're expecting too much of them. You really have to know them. Uh, I can just tell you from my own experience, I mean, I don't have the same energy level that I had 10 years ago. In fact, I don't think I have the same energy level that I had yesterday. <laughs> but that's not to say that, you know, I'm just prepared to sit on the, on the fence and do nothing. Uh, but I... I think it's easy sometimes for the leaders of various committees and so on to make the assumption that, well, gee, um, this person just has no interest in participating. And, uh, that may not always be the case. Maybe they, you know, they have no interest because in their history, they've done a lot for Rotary and it's in their game plan, you know, just to, to coast out the last few years. So, uh, just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, but I really, really do agree with everything else that you said. And the importance of really, really knowing your member is, I think, a key to retention. And I'd like to, looks like I'd like to, build, I'd like, oh, yeah, sorry. I unmuted myself because I really want to just build on what you just said. I think sometimes, you know, we, as a smaller club, it is a little easier for us to um, personalize. Um, the activity to the member versus maybe some of the bigger clubs. And I know that uh, from our perspective this year, I know we've been working on sort of four different streams of engagement and, and as to what that looks like for our members and, and people will onboard certain ones and, and not participate in others, but it's creating that diversity that is inclusive to everybody. And, and for us, it's really been um, maybe a, a building year coming back from where where, where we've been, because we, we, we did lose quite a few members during COVID. And, uh, and for us, I just appreciate all of these um, um, uh, learning uh, and webinars for, for us to, to be able to continue that and to, to grow into the, into, the, into the future. So, so thank you for all of this. Well, you know, we don't have to be just plastic. We can, uh, we're pretty easy for us to show up uh, with you as well, if, you, if, you, if you'd like to. So 
So that's great. Oh, Mr. Berg wants to speak. Uh oh. Don't you never give a past district governor the mic. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, there's three people, three faces on this thing that know that the um, the only difference between a, a pair of runners and a and uh, and, and a past district governor in, inside joke. I just wanted to add a couple of <laughs> couple of points of color to the appreciation issue, and one is that even when somebody says, "Oh, well, you don't need." To, I, I'm not there for the recognition. I don't, you know, I'm not uh, that that you don't need to do that. When you do it for that person, everybody else in the room hears it as well. And they and if some and and if if some of the people in there say, "Damn it," then maybe what I'm going to do is uh, even subconsciously, I'm going to I'm going to increase my effort, you know, one percent or ten percent, so that so that I get recognized. And I get appreciated as well. The other thing, the, the flip side of that, and I've, and I've, I've spoken to ex-Rotarians who have said, you know, I just, I did more work for this club than anybody else. The whole rest of them put to uh, combined and I never got recognized. So the heck with you, I'm, I'm out the door. So, um, you know, that, that's just a, a couple of points of color that I wanted to add to uh, what uh, what you uh, Dan and Jeff are saying? Excellent, Rick. One more. Yeah, question to uh, Diane. I think I heard her say, or you said, Diane, that uh, your club had four streams or four strategies that we were working on. I think to rebuild or to grow. Can you share them with us tonight? Um. Yeah. Sure. The, there's sort of four four um lines that not necessarily just to rebuild but to engage the membership so one is volunteerism right out in the community one is uh, education in terms of uh, you know how how can we continue to educate ourselves through rotary as well as have um, education through the community because there's a lot of new and and varying um charities that people are looking forward to and 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 want to hear from and the um, the third one is social because we we need to plan these social events um, monthly so that we're not just um, uh, you know all business and no fun. And and the fourth is just con continue to um, uh, to uh, uh, visit other clubs so that we feel part of a bigger community. So those are the four things that we've chosen to focus on on, on this year. And uh, I hope that helps clarify Thanks. what we're doing. Thanks. That's, a, that's excellent, Diane. You know, that, that, that subtle point about visiting other clubs, you know, I, I guess I've been Rotary so long that I remember when we had to do our makeups and go to other clubs and do things if we missed a meeting. And, you know, it, sadly, we got rid of that because uh, you learn more by going to other clubs and seeing what's happening and listening to what they're doing right and, and, and getting things done. So Keith, you've been, you've been quiet there. I mean, how's, how is the Sunrise Club doing, and, and how well, you've got the Satellite Club now that uh, you have come in there with you, and how, how's that all working? Uh, the Satellite Club is struggling a little bit, but we're working with them. Um, I think it'll be okay. But this has been really excellent because we were just talking today at our meeting about doing some type of questionnaire to see how the club members are are feeling. But what I've heard from you is it shouldn't be a questionnaire; it should be actually in person. We could have the questionnaire. I you know. What we're going to ask the questions that could be our basis for what we're going to talk to the people about but it's been really timely what you've been talking about so i appreciate that actually we got to stop the june swoon so let's let's get at her like it's yeah you know well, that's that's the key yeah neil berg and i had a conversation a while back about the questionnaire thing and and i don't know what ended up happening neil but uh i i heartily recommend it face to face as opposed to sending out a questionnaire uh, because I, I don't think you, I, don't, I think we as people don't naturally give, um, you know, all of the information when we're kind of addressing a, uh, a questionnaire. Um, I think if we have a conversation with someone, a human being, I think then we, we're, we tend to be more honest with ourselves and honest with them. Um, so. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, thanks for that, Jeff. We, we've had a, a kind of, I, I, I would call it a tradition or a protocol in our in our club for the last several years, where the uh, the president elect uh, spends a lot of time in uh, in May um, talking to every client, every 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 um, uh, every rotary, and and um, it's a it's. I guess it is scripted in that there are a list of particular questions that you want to address, but it's it's always done, based, it's always done personally, ear to ear or 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 or, or face to face, and um, and I, I I'd, I'd suggest it's I agree with you that it's absolutely the right way to do it. You know, it's it's it's. Uh... They're scripted, but it's like our, our home build in Mexico, Neil, where, you know, you go, we build the same house and we have been for 16 years in Mexico, but every experience is different. So you can have a scripted uh, set of questions that you want to ask. But again, every every member is an individual and every member's needs or concerns could be different. And and really, it's just, it's there as a guideline, not not as a rule book. And I think that that's what we've got to, it's, you know. And right now, and I'm going to reinforce this again, that this is the critical time. I feel Rotary very often, it's like the Calgary Flames power play. I mean, they skate around, they've got great passes going on, they look beautiful, but they forget to shoot the puck, right? Cool. And right now, we need we need every member, every uh, the leadership of all our clubs shooting the puck and, and asking the questions and, and, and talking to our members. And and to your point, Doug, earlier, you know, this is this could be the start of an ongoing. We got we got to make membership a contact sport, and we got to make sure that that contact is regular. So, yeah. So I, I do want to finish off the points on this screen. I think a lot of us realize that if we send out our invoices earlier than we have traditionally, we kind of spark those conversations. That's really what it's about. And, and give us an opportunity to address whatever the concerns are. Um, and, um, and of course, uh, communicating regularly. I think um, it was brought up that maybe we're kind of late in the game by addressing this in May and hoping to solve the problem in June. Um, but uh, maybe what we start today will help us with June of next year uh, if it doesn't help immediately. Um, and uh, and then setting goals, I heard uh, uh, Diane talk about their plan, uh, and that's part of setting your goals, having the plans that underpin the goals. And um, and if you don't have a plan, then you know the old saying, you plan to fail. Um, and um, so set a goal and work towards it. The I don't know if everyone here was at district conference and heard Darcy McIntyre talk about uh, the goal in Red Deer. Um, and uh, in their 100th year, they set a goal of getting back to 100 members. They were uh, at 58 at the start of the year. And um, as of the last measure, they were up to 80. And um, so it was still quite a climb up. And, uh, and that's all part of setting a, that, uh, that audacious goal. And, uh, and like I said to Darcy, sometimes when we uh, aim for the stars, we hit the moon. Uh, but either way, we've we've made progress, and uh, that was quite a quite an inspiring uh, talk that he gave. And then the last thing on this slide I'll say is to every club is this is not the time to let off on your growth. Uh, your recruiting, uh, bringing on new members, uh, keep the gas pedal to the metal, and uh, so keep growing while at the same time um, make sure we don't lose anybody unnecessarily. Any comments on that? Doug? Doug? I was just going to comment on the recognition and part of, uh, of this on there. Uh, and that is where you started, mm -hmm. started out. Because I think that I, I'm going to confess to being a bit of a heretic. I think there's too much emphasis placed on the Paul Harris Awards. These are something that people buy. Mm -hmm. Contributions are good. It's valuable. And that, but there are a number of other Rotary Awards. 
and clubs can earn points and give Paul Harris awards to members outside of the Rotary Club, members in the community. Mm -hmm. So I think that one of the things that each of the clubs should look at, have someone in the club that has a responsibility of looking at the potential for the recognition of specific members in, the, in their club and specific people in the community that their club could recognize. This might be in, in your club giving uh, someone uh, a certificate that requires uh, um, a true, there's a true Rotarian award, there's certificates for special contributions uh, in the areas of uh, community service, international service, club service that require district um, sort of support uh, on there and failing all else. And if you don't think someone fits, but they get something, make up a certificate for them and give them a special club recognition. I, I think that that once people can see that that's happening, to me, that means more than the Paul Harris. Now, I recognize that the Paul Harris is here to stay and, and, and that and different people don't share my view. But the point is that we need to think beyond the Paul Harris into many of these other opportunities, tangible opportunities to recognize our members and community members who support our members. I think I think that's what what's been said, Doug. Is that that you know the recognition can be as simple as just to thank you in, in, in at a club meeting, and and uh, there's different ways to do it. I and mean, you ask certificates. There's different ways. The important thing is that to say thank you and to let people understand why you're saying thank you. The Paul Harris, I think, is a whole different uh, discussion uh, in that really. The, it's recognition for, I mean, the the foundation and all the work that's done in the, within the foundation and the amount of uh, how important that is to a lot of our programs, both locally and internationally, uh, is really important. And to recognize and and it really is trying to make uh, we, really what we're trying to do there as Rotary is to make the foundation your charity of choice. And it, it's surprising to us. Uh, you know, you know, when you get to you know the DG level or you get to whatever level, that they really the foundation is not the charity of choice. We do really well in our club. Your club does incredibly well because of the Mahood uh, foundation uh, group donation that was made. But at the end of the day, um, you know, we uh, we all benefit from it, and so we need that. That's really what the Paul Harris is for. Our club, for example, does an integrity award. Just like you talk about, we bring in community members and thank them. So I think uh, I hear your point, and I think you know we're looking at it from a different part of the circle uh, on how we're understanding that. I think we have time for one more question. I think Gary's on, uh, and then we're we're kind of at the end of our hour. Our incoming district governor, and I apologize again for my voice. I'm struggling to talk, but. Our, our incoming district governor had coffee with me. I, I, I was blown away that uh, he would take time out of his day to uh, sit with a member and have coffee. And uh, one of the things he mentioned about membership was that we make the mistake sometimes, clubs do, where we send out 20 members from our own club for a volunteer um, occasion. And of course, it's becoming harder and harder to get people because you got bingo, you got casinos, you got this, you got that. So you're calling on the same people and the same people are going. What a, a club in Texas did is that they contacted their charities and said, when you're doing another volunteer event, we want to send two or three of our members in rotary gear saying, we're going to participate with the charity in their event. So now you've got a room. We did it, by the way, last week at the community kitchen. There were 25 baby boomers from the meetup group, Baby Boomers, and three of us, Paul K. Hill, myself, and Al Muller, in Rotary gear, and uh, 25 others who weren't Rotary. And uh, we then will go back and just soft sell the idea of coming visit us at a meeting. But that, I thought, was one of the profound things that I heard, was that we do go out together, 20 of us. We're all members already. 
I'm not going to get any new members from that 20. Whereas if you go with 20 other people that are not members, you might attract one or two. Yep. Wear your colors everywhere you go. You know, I think uh, it, it's exactly. really important. It creates some dialogue and, and whatever. So I, I think, Jeff, is there anything you want to do to wrap up? But I think uh, we, if you've got any additional questions, why don't you throw them in the chat? And, uh, you know, Jeff and I will agree to get back to you uh, with, with some answers uh, uh, at a later date. But I think we need to respect everybody's time and move on. Jeff? Yep. No, nope. just the last slide here is when should we start all of this? We should start now. We should hopefully we've already been doing a lot of these things. And uh, the sooner we begin communicating uh, to our members, um, the better your chances and the more time you'll have to retain those hard earned um, new members, especially, but also your valued uh, uh, more senior members as well. And like the last statement says, it takes less effort to retain a member than it does to find, recruit, and train a new member. And uh, it was funny, I was talking with uh, uh, someone that uh, contacted me today about membership in my club. And that was precisely what they said to me, is that it always uh, takes less effort to retain someone than it does to find, recruit, and train another member. So, so uh, there's one thing in the chat. Yeah, just, oh, thanks, Doug. Any so, questions, uh, you know where to find us. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so thanks, uh, Dan and Jeff, for leading and facilitating this session this evening. I particularly enjoyed the, I'm going to call it the dialogue, trilogue or multilogue that we had tonight with uh, pretty well everybody contributing either a comment or a question, which is always good. Um, and, and thanks to everyone that, to the 12 of us sir, that were on tonight. I see we lost Joyce early on. Uh, probably due to technical difficulties, I'm presuming. But uh, I hope that um, we can start today, tomorrow, and work on some of these things, these tips and these ideas that Jeff and Dan have put together um, for us and so that we can try to minimize the June swoon. And if we don't, then shame on us. So um, look for a PDF of the PowerPoint slides that have been shared tonight. That'll go out tomorrow morning to everyone that was on the call tonight. And the video recording will be um, probably out by the, be posted on our district YouTube channel. And you'll be sent a link probably in a couple of days, certainly by the end of the week. Uh, our next and final club learning webinar for this Rotary year is Wednesday, June 21st. And we're gonna talk about Rotary and Rotary's public image and the importance of that. And that will be delivered by Paul Tarrant, who is the district uh, lead for the public, public relation, or sorry, public image and communications committee. So with that, everybody, thanks again. Um, like to wish everyone a great Thank evening you. and thanks for again for joining us. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thanks everybody. Remember, it's a contact sport. Thanks, Dan. Okay, bye-bye.